To me, the most romantic, beautiful love stories ever were the ones where two people meet, fall in love, and then 50, 60 years later, one of them dies, and then a few days after that, the other one dies because they just can't bear to live without each other. Not that that's such a good example of a happy ending. I mean, you got two dead people in that example, but that's how I always thought things would be for Katie and me. I do. I do. I'm pregnant. It's a boy. Happy birthday. I'm pregnant. It's a girl. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. You're not really hearing me. You're not listening. You can't let go of anything. Why should you be responsible for anything? Oh, that's right. You're perfect, and I've done nothing right in 15 years. My favorite therapist was the one with the birthmark on his forehead. Right, the one that looked like the state of California. How could you pay attention to anything that guy was saying? This cycle of closeness and estrangement, what instigates it, triggers it? First thing that comes to your mind. Sacramento. Governor Gray Davis. Fear. That's the main motivator for everything. That and guilt are the two emotions that keep a society humming. It's the wear and tear of the job. The diapers, the tantrums, the homework, the state capitals. Suddenly all you're aware of is that it's virtually impossible to French kiss a person who takes the new roll of toilet paper and leaves it resting on top of the empty cardboard roll. God forbid he takes the two seconds to actually replace it. Does he not see it? Does he not see it? Isn't this the moment where one of us is supposed to say, look, this is ridiculous, we love each other, all couples go through this, let's give it another try? My goldfish died. My hamster died. My father's died. If you want, you can stay for dinner. You sure? No.